<laughs> Grand day, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to the Daily Huddle. It's so great to be here with all these smiling faces and all this vibrant energy. My name is Chase Steele Gray, and I'm here with my co-pilot, Sorel Keton, the Admiral. And always good to be here. So, I... Uh, Man, uh, we're going to have such a great show today. I, I, I'm welcoming my my kin back. We're going to have a great time, and uh, we're going to get into the question. But first, I decided to drop my favorite quote today instead of a joke. It's a quote that I always feel is connected somewhat to this topic. And the quote is, forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Mm. Mark Twain. Roll that tape. Yes, indeed. I'm going to put that in the chat. I know that's a deep, deep quote. I'm yes. going to say I'm going to say it again because it's really worth saying again. Thank you. The quote is <clears throat> forgiveness is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Very deep. You got to think about this quote because it makes a lot of sense, but you got to say it a couple of times and it makes sense. Thank you so much for being here on the Daily Huddle. Once again, Chase Steele Gray with Sorel Caton. We definitely are happy to be here as always. And as we always do, we check the temperature in the room with some of our star players. We love it. I'm going to start out with Miss Rashida today. How are you and what are you grateful for? Oh, I am. Oh, my goodness. I am healthy. Uh -huh. I'm vibrant and I'm here. And what I'm grateful for, I'm grateful for the universe that it grant me so much soothing life. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Let's go to Carmen, the energizer bunny of life. I love when Carmen speaks. She's, she's on another level. Carmen, are you there? Good morning, good morning, good morning, buenos dias. That's what I'm talking yes. about. <laughs> <laughs> wow, my heart <laughs> skipped a beat. Where are you? And <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Who will you hug today? I'm right here, right now, ever and ever. And I'm going to hug the more precious Christ creator in the world, my grandchildren that are visiting oh. me from Carolina, Las Carolinas are nice. here. Nice. And, I, and through them, I'm going to hold the whole planet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's why I call on you. That's why I call on you. You will never need a microphone. It's such a great thing. <laughs> so <clears throat> we, I, I'm so happy once again to invite our guest, Dr. Pamela Joyce. And we're going to unpack a question today, and I'm going to have her go through it. But for those of you who have not seen Dr. Pam Joyce before, I'm going to just read off this amazing little short bio, just so you know who she is. Pamela Joyce PD was born in Manhattan, New York, to West Indian parents. She holds multiple degrees in education, a BA in early childhood and elementary education, an MA as a reading specialist, a PhD in urban education. Her books, that's right, books, she has books. School Hazard Zone, Beyond the Silence, Finding a Voice, and Bleeding Innocence, and Seductive Trappings, all available on Amazon. She also has a new project. I'm going to have her let you know about that as well. Please welcome to the Daily Holler, Dr. Pamela Joyce. Good morning, everybody. I am so excited to be back. I know you are, too. Oh, oh my you. God, I really am. <laughs> <laughs> so... We are going to unpack this question. But can one person make a difference when depleted due to trauma, pain, and or grief? Great question, obviously. 
I want you to kick it off before I say anything and go where you need to go. And then if I have time, I'll chime in. Okay, so I was thinking about the question and again, another loaded question, it's a big Correct. question. Um, but I thought of this thing that you're probably gonna wonder where is she going with this, but my first thought was that I see you and that my friend gave me a, um, a magnet the other day and it said, I see you. And when I, when I opened the present and I saw the magnet, I cried because mm -hmm. it was so emotional for me. You like, she was shocked that I started crying because, but it, it was so impactful because I thought, oh my God, somebody sees me finally, you know? Um, and that's how, that's what I related to the question. I related that to the question, can one person make a difference, right? When depleted due to the trauma, pain and grief and or grief that they have suffered. I said, you know what? If you can see yourself and if you can see somebody else, other people, then you can make a difference. Because for me, I feel like if, if I can see you, I can feel your pain, your trauma, your grief, but I have to see myself. I have to be honest with myself and be present, pause and be present to understand who I am, to see myself first so that you can see me and then I can see other people. Mm. And that is like, in a nutshell, my first thoughts for that question. Would you say that that is congruent with um, when someone says you have to love yourself properly before you love somebody else? Is that in the same vein of what you're talking about? Yeah, I, I think so, because it, it all starts with you. It's right. just like that airplane thing that we talked about one time, you know, who gets the, the vest first. So you put that on so you can protect others. So it's the same kind of concept that you have to really be in sync with yourself first in order for you to go out in the world and give back and help others. And I think that took a long time for me to comprehend because I didn't, I wanted to give back. Like I, I really wanted to give back, but it was, it became such an insurmountable thing. Like it was a difficult thing to give back. And I thought to myself, who would think that in a world that's so needy that you would have a problem figuring out how to give back, what to give back, where to give back, you know, it became like a who, what, when, where, why type of a thing. Yeah. I, I mean, you and I have been speaking about this for years. Yes. And I think that you are definitely without a question on the upper echelon of giving human beings that I've met in my life. I always tell you that like, I come from a family of givers, right? Yes. So as a child, you know, your sister, my mother, always giving stuff away, always providing for people, always talking. I'm going to go pick up this girl's mother. I'm going to go pick up this girl's kid. I got this thing for this lady at the work who's having a hard time. And that's what I know, right? So when I see you or when I did see you in this situation of trauma, dealing with your husband passing and this and that, whatever, I still saw you the same way. Like when you came into the room at that event we were at for, uh, for Steve, you brought that light into the room and we know you, we know you were suffering and having a hard time or whatever. I, I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, that the foundation that we have, I mean, you had it before me, you were born before me and then it was passed on to me, helped us so much because when we go out, you as a teacher, when you're in front of people, you don't bring that crap with you. You go in like a soldier. You go in like ready to go. And they're like, oh, Miss Joyce, Dr. Joyce, hi, how are you? Hi, everybody. They don't know what's going on, how you're suffering or whatever. And that's the thing where, and again, we've talked about this, the people who can let you let the mask off for a second, right? right? You have been that person to me right? 
Rashida has been that person to me. A very small group of people, right? Because when you say, excuse me, I see you, do you see me? Like when certain people say they see you, they don't really see you. It's not really true. Right. So I understand what you mean about the emotional thing. But for you, and I'm just giving you your accolades, it seems easier for you because of your foundation. Again, outer perspective is never inner perspective. I can look at you and go, you are gorgeous. And you could be like, I feel like crap today. I barely <laughs> got out of my house. Right? right, right, right. Per- perception. Yes. So my question to you is, at this stage of the of the trauma, if we still want to call it that, do you still label it as trauma? Oh, no, I label it as a blessing now. Ah, see, that's what I'm saying. I've been transformed now. <laughs> so you transformed it. So I've people seen the light. say that. Yeah, <laughs> people say that. I like how you corrected me really quickly. And that's what I'm saying, to see that progress, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How do you deal with people who... <laughs> who come at you that know you and will say something like, so, you know, it must be tough, huh? After all this time not being with Steve, like, how do you deal with it? They come in on the low end like this to get into you as opposed to, hey, how are you? What's going on? They think they have to be a certain way. How do you feel about that? Oh, well, I, I feel like they haven't done all of their work yet to, right. to be on a higher level. Um, so, you know, you just have to accept accept everybody where they are. So you just, you know, deal with that. My thing is, I've learned that you have to do some deep, deep extra work, internal work, in order to to raise your level and um, be able to see all your blessings. And I know there are these sayings, but you know, like, when something bad happens, there's always something good to come out of it. But you have to really dig deep to find the good. Yeah. And it's always there. It's always there. That's the enlightenment that I came up with. And, you know, I was thinking about some sayings this morning, like, remember the one that takes a village? Yes. And then um, be the change you want to see. Mm-hmm. And, um, and you know, one person can make a difference. And they're all true if you can do that work. Mm. And, you know, it's just about, well, there, there are different depths to it, too, and levels about right. the giving, because I was thinking about, you know, how you said, like, you know, we do things every, all the time in the family and all that. Uh-huh. So the thing what I was thinking about this morning was every day you, you try and be a good person. Most mm-hmm. people try and be a good person. So they're actually doing good things every day. My problem was I wanted to go beyond the one-on-one, beyond the one like I'm opening the door for this person, right. uh, you know, I'm doing a so- little something for this one. I wanted to do more giving back that was more lasting and that yeah. would spread further. Right. And, um, and so I had to figure out what was it that I, what did I have to even give? that right. would transcend the day-to-day one-on-one giving back, you know, opening the door for somebody kind of a thing. Right. And that's where the intense work came up. And um, I think like if everybody thought like that, they'd be able to do more as one person. They could do more than open the door for somebody. You could do more than make a meal for the, the needy person in your building, the elderly needy person in your building. You could do more than that, hmm. you know? And um, so I think it there are different things and there are different ways to give back. So the one that we have in America that kind of saddens me a little bit that that's the one that's promoted all the time is about money. D- donate here, give money here. You know, I like to see somebody. That's I like what I, I'm the same way. Somebody, you know, I don't want to give this money because I, I don't know where that money's going. You know, I, I want to be able to, if I'm going to give that money, like, okay, I'd go to the food bank and give them a Costco card so they can fill up their fridge. Right. Okay. That, that kind of money is fine. But then beyond that, can you share any of your expertise? Can you share your knowledge? Mm-hmm. Can you share your education? Can you share some skills that you have? Can you do that? That's where the hard part comes because you have to fit into a box in order to do that. 
in America, at least. That's what I found out. If you want to help this one, you have to like get trained in this area. Oh, we have a little training session first and then we do this and that. And I said, okay, well, I don't, I don't want to do that because I have my own thought in my mind what I want to do and how I want to help this person, right? Or these people, right? I don't want to be trained to do that because I already know how to do that. So that was my problem. And, um, you know, I had to explore many avenues and uh, like I mentioned the last time, so something came up that out of the clear blue, you know, just came up in the form of the collages thing. And that's how I figured to, I can now touch more people and gather funds to touch people and actually meet people. Right. Can you, um, cause I know maybe not everybody was on the last one. Can yeah. you just give us a brief overview of that? one more time because I want to make sure people know about it. If you have any there with you, just grab or whatever. I don't know. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. It, I mean, it doesn't have to be, you don't have to, if you don't have it right now, but um, I really think it's a great project. And I think that um, uh, I really like what you said about the bigger give. Yeah. Right? You can go to the store on your way to your friend's party and give them a plant, or you can go to the nursery and give them seeds to grow a tree. Right. It's a big difference. Yes. A big yes. difference. And I thought about that in our family where I forget where we're going, but somebody gave somebody seeds for a tree. And then later I had to come back and went, whoa, that's the tree that was planted. And wow. that kind of giving is very, very powerful <clears throat> to, I know, I don't know if you're familiar with Tyler Perry, but Tyler Perry did something in Atlanta where he found out all these older people were not able to pay their uh, their mortgages. They were going to lose their houses. Mm -hmm. So he gave the city like $500,000 and the money went across everything. And every year that money goes to different people in perpetuity. I was like, wow, that's mm -hmm. what I'm talking about. Right. So and, and you see how he did it. He made it up. Like he figured it, like he did, correct. he created that, mm -hmm. that. I prefer to do that than go fit into the box. Yeah, no box. These people have these things already. And, you know, it's too, I, I, agree. Don't, I, I don't know if it's too, it's not personal enough for me. It is possible. And that's, that's the point we're making with, with this um, topic. But I think one of the most important things, and I hope that that's what's going to happen with this Zoom, is yeah. as it sits there, people will look, or maybe someone will call you or call me or text me and say, hey, what do you think I should do with such and such? Because as almost everything in life, a lot of people don't move until they see somebody. Wow, you did that? Right. Yeah, right. I could do that. And then they go forward. And I think a lot of times people get caught up in the amount of money you have, right? Right, right. Oprah was talking to, mm -hmm. uh, to Letterman one time and Letterman said, you are Oprah Winfrey. That's incredible. Well, how does that feel? She said, what do you mean, Dave? I'm just me. He said, but when you give, you make schools, you, you fly people to other countries. And she said, listen, I want to say this is very important. You give the way you can give. Mm -hmm. If you give $5 to that guy on the street, you just changed his whole day. Right. If you give $400,000 because you're a millionaire, okay, you do that. People stop trying to get to other people's level of giving. And I never right. got that. Like we can do something. Everyone can do something. Right. right. Exactly. And, and your trauma and my trauma, we all have trauma of some sort. I feel it lifting when I give to people, when I show up for people and they always go, man, you always so happy. You always have it all together. No, I don't. <laughs> you just see me at my high moments. If you saw me in my low moments, you would go, oh, wow. And I think that's important to expose on certain levels that no one is hitting the mark every day. We all right. have insecurities. The trauma takes us to different places back and forth all the time. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was crying the other day on the train out of nowhere. I brought this up before. Out of nowhere, my body needed to cleanse. I went through it, right? So right. that's where we are with that. And I think it's great that you brought up those points. If anyone has any questions, ah, CC, go right ahead. <clears throat> Good morning. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you cut out. We don't hear you anymore. Did you mute yourself? There you go. Can you hear me? 
Yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Oh, you are so generous because giving is one way that I um, have been blessed by giving and people have been giving to me. And it's true. It's not about the amount you give. It's the heart condition. Um, I gave away a piece of pound cake and the next day somebody bought a whole cake and being vulnerable, you can give somebody a piece of yourself by being thankful, being graceful, being kind, saying a good word, smiling, mm -hmm. all and yeah. all kind of ways. And I do not want to limit the amount of giving mm -hmm. that, that I'm able to give based on my thinking. I've even given with no money, with, with the little money I had, I gave it all away. Mm -hmm. Within minutes, money came back to me. And if I would have held on to it and been stingy, I don't think it would have opened up the opportunity to receive. I so, I, so I put no limitations on what I would do for a person. Right. Um, I grew up in trauma. That was all, all addictions, alcoholics, drug addicts, all that. And what I did is I learned their psyche through AA books. And I started teaching people how to be free using the AA book, Alcoholics Anonymous. And I wasn't addicted to alcohol and addiction is the same, no matter what it is called. Hmm. There's no one better or no one worse. It's still a, a unhealthy place to be in. And I was one of them. I just didn't use alcohol. I used food and hmm. food is just as deadly as alcohol. It will yeah. lead to death. So hmm. I took charge and now I'm free. And now God has allowed me to help somebody else and carry them through their journey. I'm just a testimony, a witness, and a witness to, to God helping them in a way where I could not help them or even help myself. And someone carried me out, and now I'm ready to carry somebody else out. So thank you so much for this topic, Excellent. and I pass. Absolutely. Excellent. That's amazing. Yeah. Thank you so much for saying that. Uh, Rashida. Auntie, good morning. Great. Hi, Hi Auntie. Auntie. How are you? Are I you? am so, so happy that Chase have brought you back and that you shared space with us. And one of the things that I take away from this, um, this morning is how it is that the question that if you see me, do you see me? And it's amazing how we go around and we walk this planet and we don't know that people are seeing us. Mm -hmm. So we just have to do the right thing, no matter where you go. And why I say this is I remember 15 years ago, I used to work at a nursing home as a companion to a, a young lady. I used to call them young lady. And they used to love when I said young lady. And I remember every evening when I come to the door, the lady them say, oh, yes, she is, yes, she is. I say, what happened? He said, we've been waiting on you. We <laughs> want a back massage. These ladies, I didn't work for these ladies, but I used to come, come, let me give you a back massage and let me feel you up. And they say, oh my goodness, you come right here hurting me. Trust me, just that little thing yeah. is when you know that people really see you. Mm -hmm. So are you really see me? Yes, I make myself to be seen. And why is because I love to give back. And with that, auntie, we're going to keep, keep it going and keep giving back. And everybody see me, logic, because <laughs> I let myself be seen. Thank you, guys. Yes. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Holy cow. I Carmen. Know. Oh, my God. You're muted once again. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Hola, hola, hola. Hello. Hola. Pamela, you're welcome back. You made my day. Gracias. Oh. <laughs> excellent, excellent topic that, that I think most of the people, if not everybody, but pass by the same situation. Mm -hmm. That no matter what we have in our heart, and we go out, we, 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 uh, we, we better smile for mm -hmm. the people. Because I have a thing that no matter what uh, the day that I go out, and I said, 
I look at people, people smile to me. And I remember one time I was taking care of a young lady like Rachida, like I was a home care worker too. And uh, I was working with, the, with her in her neighborhood and people smiled to me. And she said, I'm living here since I was born and I never go to the street and nobody smiled with me. <laughs> and I said, maybe can, can we practice to smile first? that maybe you smile to them, they're gonna do the same to you. Mm -hmm. And this is a, it's a beautiful thing that even in the situation that we are, that we come in from, that we can be a giver and then smiling. Because when you smile, the sky is open for you and you open the sky for others that they don't know how to smile. Thank mm -hmm. you, with that, and our blessing for all. Thank you, yeah. That is so, so cool. So yeah. powerful. So it powerful. Is. Yeah. When you hear is. each person speaking. Yeah. Again, I keep going back to this concept that I said before. It's that balance between how people see us and how we really are. Right. Like sometimes we really are not good. I wouldn't go out to lead my band or go to another band and come in like, oh, I'm not feeling that good today. I'm just going to do whatever. I would never do that. Right. But I, I came to some times when I was... I was really not in a good place. I was upset. I was crying. I had some things going on in my personal life and I had to pull up to that level mm -hmm. to do it. And that's the part where, when I'm talking with you, that we interact with, like we want to get the momentum so that we're there most of the time, not having to switch right. Right. back and forth. Yes. It's, sometimes it's tough, man. Yeah. Woo. And then, you know what? Sometimes when you pull yourself up, when it takes everything in you to pull yourself up, you, you not only help yourself at that moment, you help yourself for later on too, because what happens is you realize you have the power to heal yourself. And if you can pull yourself out, up out of the depths, out of the darkest, darkest places, and you do that for yourself, right? That's powerful. And right. you claim that power. Right. You know, so um, I think <clears throat> it's very important to give those things back to people who, who seem like they have a problem pulling themselves up. That means if you were able to do it, that's a, a lesson. That's um, something really good that you could give back. So you could give that back. Whatever it is, I mean, you know, that's why I said um, my husband's passing and everything. That's why I said it brought me to a very higher, 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 higher place in life. Right. Because I had to deal with, dig, dig so deep right. that you raise yourself so emotionally, you know. And so I have such a passion and a fervor inside of me to give that back because I know people can help themselves now when at the darkest point, right. at the darkest point. Right. And I want to give that back. And you asked me before about the uh, collage thing. Yeah. So this is the, as I dug deep, the deepest part in me created the collage, right? So I don't know if you can see this, this is just one of them, right. but the site, you have the PJ healing spaces on the, Right. I believe it's on the thing. Yes. I believe okay. it's there. Mm -hmm. So I created a little site and um, these are the collages. You can see a, a number of them. I have like a hundred, but a number of them are on this new site. It's under construction now, but you can still go there and see um, what it's all about. And it's based, it came out from the books that I wrote when I was trying to you know, when I was actually being very cathartic writing the books, I wrote four books and they're like a healing series about it really all to do with bringing myself up from the depths into the light. And so what happened is the collages came out of that because I illustrated the books with the collages. And when you go to the site, you'll read about, you know, the whole history of that. But the thing is, I was able to figure out I could give back with the collages. So now the site is a site where I sell the collage and 50% of the proceeds go to 
the like the needy in in the town. I I'm going to pick uh, five or four <laughs> local places in my town where I would give the money to um, at the end of each month after you know the sales for the month. So I think that um, I finally found some way to reach more people, like help more people uh, through a talent that I have. Right. Sorel, I'm sorry to keep you waiting for so long, Captain. Uh, no worries at all. It's worth waiting for. I wondered where you went. Where did you go to? <laughs> I, I am here. Uh, I'd love for you to end on this note. The uh -oh. way you spoke today, you said, you related the question to the phrase, I see you. Yes. And I know a lot of people hear that phrase, They've watched Avatar and everybody's walking around saying, I see you. And I'm wondering, do you have a ready access that you could help us gain right now to seeing another? So the question I have is, how do I see another? And see them in a way such that for them, they are seen. Yeah. So... My thing was that I was kind of judgmental in my life because my in my family, uh, there were a lot of judgment things. So I was raised like that. So I became judgmental for a lot of things. And I, I have realized that over time. So I see you to me is when I can see in that person, I strip them bare of all the things that bother me about them, okay? Because that's their personal thing. They became that way through maybe lots of hardships and experiences that I'll never know about because they're not even gonna share that with me probably. You know what I mean? And so I have to see them for, for their best self. And everybody has a best self because Somebody said something like, like, everybody, like, if you're a mother, the kids love you. If your father, the kids love you. you. You're this. If you're a teacher, your students love you. People love you for various reasons. So I try now and see them for something that they could be loved for and not something that I have a problem with, which is my problem. That would be my problem because they're living their life. Okay. And so I need to, to, accept them for who they are and, and accept those experiences because I certainly want people to understand my experiences and don't judge me when they come to see me or they're talking to me. And so I have to learn how to look at people and see them for their best self and not the things that bother me personally about them. I, I got it. I got it. Thank you so much. So I'm walking away with this, seeing another isn't something I do with my eyes. Oh. It's actually something I do as a personal gift that I give to myself first of ridding myself or disabusing myself of my interpretations of who they are. Yes, yes. And then seeing heart. something beyond those interpretations. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, use yeah. your heart. Wow, I love it. Thank you. I love how you wrap things up, though. <laughs> I love how you like, like made that all summarized. It's great. I got to write that down. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Go back to the tape. Write it down. It, it sounded know, good, right? too. It really sounded good. So we are over time. Thank you so much, Dr. Joyce. I don't know why I love saying that so much. I've known you all my life. I love saying that. Um, and uh, thank you all for joining us today. We always uh, conclude with our seven tenets that we love so much. They make so much sense. First of all, love, love more. Please love more. The world needs it. Live out loud. Laugh. Move your body. Eat mostly plant-based if you can handle it. And I know you can. And make sure, as we spoke today, give. Give more of yourself so that those who are depleted, who have no idea what giving is, because no one ever gives to them, you will be the catalyst for the forward motion. And lastly, just check your own self. 
before you wreck yourself. It will change everything. Take that breath before you speak. Thank you so much for being here. We are always great to see, glad to see everyone. And I'm always glad to host. Thank you everyone for being here on the Daily Huddle. And we will see you tomorrow as always. Have a spectacular day. Thank you, Daily Huddle family. Thank you, Dr. Joy. Thank you so much. One love, auntie. One love, guys. One love. Okay, I love you. Love you. So the after party can continue.